place is so cool! This library is enormous! I'll have to ask Daddy for a bigger one. Yeah, this library is fit for a king. Hmm, I don't know. Vampires don't have kings. We gotta find those mirror pieces. Oh yeah, look at all that big empty space. That's the good shit. Look at all this empty space. Oh, oh my god, you could fit like 15 of the main character in these hallways. This is the good stuff. So this final level is called the maze. It's a maze. The skybox is kind of trippy in a good way. I like the general textures and aesthetic of this level. I like how everything's so angular. I do not appreciate the desolate, soulless open space, but I suppose we've come to expect that. At least I hope we have at this point. Things in this level are kind of color-coded for your convenience. The maze isn't hard to solve, but I will say that I had turned my brain completely off at this point in the game. So if there's a dead end, I probably ran down it at least once. I just was not here at all for this level. So what is there to say about this game that hasn't been said already? Uh, not much, actually. I will say that if more of the game were like the previous level where it was just a short burst of okay platforming and then it was over, it would outstay its welcome much less, uh, quickly. Probably would still outstay its welcome, though. But most of the game is categorized by these giant empty hallways with sparse floating platforms that just look completely out of place like someone dropped them in there without any care for how they look or work or anything. I mean, I like 3D platformers, and this game is a 3D platformer. Believe it or not, there aren't, there weren't, uh, I shouldn't say there aren't a lot of those, there are plenty of those now, but there weren't a lot of those, and this is one of them. You know, there was a period just a few years back where if you started looking up 3D platformers, you could only look for about a day before you would find Frogger's Great uh, great Quest, so... There used to not be a whole lot of 3D platformers to speak of, and... This being a brand new 3D platformer released on the Nintendo Wii and Wii U, you know, you may figure maybe it's worth a look at. It's, uh, it's not, though. And there are so many more 3D platformers now, like, so many indie 3D platformers. I don't think we'll ever get as many indie 3D platformers as we have beat-em-ups, but, you know, there's no longer a shortage. There's a lot of good 3D platformers out there now. Around the time Double Dragon Neon came out, there was like a goddamn beat-em-up renaissance in the indie games community, and there's just been beat-em-up after beat-em-up after beat-em-up, and there's more beat- And there's more beat-em-ups than you could possibly know what to do with. So I'm no longer worried about that genre. You know, you want to play a 3D platformer now? Skylar and Plux is right there. Funk Unplugged is right there. Whittle Tree Adventures is right there. There's also quite a few that try to push the genre in new directions like Unbox. You know, there's a lot. There's a lot of 3D platformers. Again, not as many as beat-em-ups, but... There's no reason for anyone to look at Monster High 13 Wishes anymore and go, Well, it's not great, but it's all we've got, because it's not all you got anymore. I know you're expecting me to mention shit like a hat in time, but that's kind of... It's kind of easy pickings, don't you think? Like, why mention a hat in time when there's things like, uh... Like, fuck, let me remember what it's called. Rising Islands, I think it's called. Why would you mention a hat in time when you could mention that, or freeze me? Or a MacBat64. There are so many more options to choose from. You don't have to play a hat in time. Or ukulele or Mario Odyssey. There's, there's still more. And if first person platformers are your thing, there's even more of those it seems. There's like no shortage of that at all. I suppose one thing you could say about this game that a lot of other 3D platformers don't have is that it's outwardly surreal. Probably not intentionally, 
But, like, look at this giant-ass empty room with floating coffins. Like, have you ever seen something this fucking bizarre on purpose? I haven't. It's just this huge, empty, square space with coffins that float around with any without any distinguishing animation to them at all. They're just rotating in the air and they're like collared like some sort of magician's box. You know, the only problem with there being so many talented indie developers is that there are more and more good games than ever before. And the likelihood of someone actually finding and playing Funk Unplugged is incredibly small. Now, you know, finding unloved games that were physically released on console, that's a lot easier. There are less of those. But digitally released unloved games, god, there are so many. Probably over tens of thousands. Like, I don't know where you'd even start. Whenever I find myself in the odd position, uh, once every, like, five months, where I somehow have money on an eShop of some sort, be it the PS4 eShop or Nintendo eShop, and I'm looking through the games. I'm just like, fuck me, how do I pick any of these? I mean, sure, there's shovelware there, no one can tell you there's not, but it's far outweighed by the number of genuine creative indie efforts. And I have to look, I have to scroll through these hundreds of creative efforts made by people that love their job and love what they're doing and say no to so many of them. This section is kind of cute, I guess. I think it's supposed to be like a reference to old-school 2D platformers, but it's straight ass. Uh, it controls like ass. The enemies crawl right up your butt while you're crawling up the rope and you can't do anything about that. It's not so good, but it looks cute. You know, even 3D Endless Runners, that's a kind of 3D platformer. It's basically 3D platforming distilled. You know, you, you go forward, you jump over obstacles, sometimes you jump on obstacles to get to other obstacles. Usually you jump over obstacles, though. And I am a large fan of Endless Runners, even the 2D ones. Preferably the 3D ones, but the 2D ones are alright, you know. Uh, Sonic Dash, Tron Runner, that happened. I don't know why Disney released that when they gave up on the Tron IP so long ago, but, you know, whatever. God, look at how fucking amazingly trippy as balls the skybox is. There is absolutely no reason for it to be that weird looking. There are so many folds in it. It could have just been a big dome. But someone was like, nah, we gotta make this look as weird as fucking possible. And I appreciate whoever did that. So you may have noticed me ground pounding some of these coffins, the ones with the coin arrows on them. And that's because those ones act as checkpoints. If you ground pound them, you can use them to ride back up to where you previously were in this platforming challenge. It's kind of nice, I guess. I mean, especially in this game where you're unlikely to want to redo any of the platforming. Again, the platforming controls are fine, but having to redo some of this stuff would probably just wear on your soul a bit, I think. You know, 10 minutes is just about the right length for a 3D platformer that moves at this speed. But there's not 10 minutes of level in each of these levels. There's like 5 minutes of level stretched out over 10 minutes. It's not like 10 minutes is a bad amount of time for a platforming level. Like, that's pretty average. I wish this game could make me feel something. I mean... Sometimes I feel angry at it, but I don't right now. Right now I just feel this hollow emptiness. The same emptiness that the game that the game is projecting onto me. I feel so lifeless right now playing this video game. Like there's no meaning behind anything. There's no point. Why am I here? Why am I doing this? Oh right, I get to play better games after this? Right. That's good enough, you know, uh... I don't know how I solved that switch puzzle. It's fine. It's not important. What is important is that after we finish Monster High, I can play better video games. And I am so very excited to share those better video games. Video games I actually like quite a lot. Where I don't have to run for what feels like an eternity to get to this door over here. So I believe this, yeah, this room right here has one of the few genuinely thinky puzzles in the game. 
I don't know why the camera is panning like this. It's just wasting my time. Time that I could be using to platform. I guess the unfolding platforms in the center are supposed to look cool or something? But they just look kind of weird and out of place. Anyway, in order to reach that mirror shard, we will have to do one of the very few actual thinking required puzzles in the game. Okay, camera, I get it. No, I, I see the mirror shard. Please. I really... I want the level to be over. I'm in the final room. Okay, so like the weird, overly giant, ridiculously poorly allocated level design... That was all me. That was my bad. I'm sorry. So anyway, the ridiculously bad, poorly allocated, overly large level design... I feel like if uh, you did... I feel like if you did these vast, empty spaces in moderation, then they could come across as more grand and less soulless. Like, a room this ridiculously enormous and poorly spaced, if it was like one of three rooms in the game to be this poorly spaced, might actually be kind of fun looking. But combined with a bunch of other equally empty, large rooms, it just makes the whole game feel like a hollow shell. And it's not like you can't have desolate areas in 3D space, you know. You can have dead, desolate places in 3D spaces. They can even be wastelands if you want. But they need to actually look... ...like something. It needs to look like you put thought and love into the environmental design. You can pull off desolate wastelands well in a 3D space. You can. It just requires a lot more effort and resource allocation and texture placement than the developers of 13 Wishes were willing to do, I think. Like, there's another 3D platformer that's shockingly similar to this game in the sense that it's also a 3D platformer uh, and is mostly covered in large desolate space. But it's so lovingly created and all the desolate space has so much meaning, grandeur, and spectacle to it. It's just not a contest. Why do you insist on saving your friends? What good will it do? You wouldn't ask that question if you knew what it meant to be a friend. I had a friend once, but she turned her back on me. Now she knows what it's like to be weak and powerless, like I was for so long! Not long enough. I think it's time for you to admit you're not ready to be a genie. You can't handle the responsibility that comes with it. Why don't you give us the last mirror piece? If you do, I promise to let you be the first to use the mirror. Or are you too afraid to see who you really are? I know who I am. I'm the one with the power. And I am going to rule you and everyone else in Monster High forever! Forever. You knew your big sis would come save you eventually, didn't you? Yeah, I guess so, but you sure took your sweet time. <laughs> hey, we're busy ghouls. I'm just glad it's all over. And I'm back with my big sis. Did you really think you 
you could stop me! I'm sorry, I just wanted you to enjoy the presentation of all of that we just witnessed without me talking over it. Because I feel like that's what matters most, is the presentation of that previous battle scene. Uh, you may have noticed that in said previous battle scene, every time I collected a mirror piece it did not play an irritating voice clip. Which means the developers probably knew the voice clips were irritating, and only decided not to play them sometimes? And uh... That's frustrating. Anyway, this is a much better boss fight than the stuff we just did. It actually incorporates platforming and all of the enemy types we've seen so far. It can be kind of fun to zip around this final area and put all the mirror shards in place to destroy the final boss. We have to actually find where all of them go and platform there and there's some neat skips you can do that probably aren't intentional but still it offers a bit more interactivity and it gives a purpose to that ridiculously giant pool. Not not quite as much as- oh my god is she T-posing? I hope that's not a T-pose, I don't have my glasses on. Her arms are probably just in a very similar position to a T-pose, but she's probably not T-posing back there. Anyway, it's over. It's over now. We did it. No more Monster High 13 Wishes. It's done. So it's all done. No more. No more of this. I'm sorry. I didn't... I didn't know what I was doing. I thought that once I had power, it would somehow make me happy. Power doesn't give you happiness. Power gives you responsibility. Genies can't selfishly make wishes for themselves. They must give wishes to others. That's the rule. I understand that now. Believe me. I do. We know. You just got a little carried away, that's all. It's just, I've always dreamt of being a genie. All my life. I know I would be a good genie if I had another chance. Maybe one day, you'll get that chance. I wish. Until then, Howleen has one wish left. And then, we both go back into the lantern. Are ready. Do you have to go? Can't you stay? Oh, oh, no, no, do not go. Please stay. I would love to stay. Experience what real teenage life is like at Monster High. But I'm a genie. There is no other way. Well, what if? What if there were? Wisp, come here. You thought you wanted the world, but I can see through you. Literally, <laughs> I get you. You were tired of lurking in the shadows while Gigi got to go out and make friends. I know what it's like to be in someone else's shadow. You thought if you couldn't be something, you'd have to be against it. But if you were the genie, what? you'd have to follow the rules. But she's, like, evil. Helene's right. If Wisp were the genie, then she'd be bound by the rules of the lantern. You'd have to do what your finder wanted. You choose. That's what I'd always wanted. It's all I ever wished for. Gigi, I'm ready for my final wish. I wish... that Wisp becomes the new genie. <laughs> yes! Releasing you to stay at Monster High. Oh, oh, yeah! Yeah! Hey! Alright! You're gonna be okay? I will be good. Goodbye! Uh, well. Finder, as you choose. Goodbye!
Thank you. The lantern fell into the deep end of the pool, and at Monster High, the deep end goes down forever. It will be found again when it wants to be.